it's a Saturday for all of you out there in Oliver's and Linda. I know that uh, many of you are boycotting jobs still out there. There's hardly there's hardly anybody out there left to take a job. All the Mexicans are working. Did you you notice that? It's did you notice that it even Joe Scarborough, old crazy Joe, on um, was shocked that we're now below. Four percent. We're down three point something percent unemployment all the way across the board. It's unbelievable. They said almost every Mexican's got a job and even the black people, hardly any of them out there, just just the ones that are making a lot of money that they're like even feeling pressure to take a job, making money off slinging drugs, crack cocaine and everything. And, um, just so, you know, Andy was talking about all the white folk that are out there stealing from Walmart. I was shocked when I saw a, a post come through the, uh, I, I don't know where I saw it. I was on Facebook or a text or what, that Walmart was shutting down. It was a notice that Walmart and Linda was shutting down at midnight. And then I, then Andy, I guess, Andy Vasquez, who just got off the air here, was saying that they were shutting down aisles to public you can't even go pick up your own product and uh it got to, it got me to thinking about you know at food max uh it's a grocery store here in the yuba sutter area at night they will shut down one of their entrances uh so you just got to come in and out the same entrance it, it's amazing uh when when law enforcement when the government uh, basically ceases to do their job. Like Andy was talking about the propositions that many of you voted for to lower the penalties on criminal behavior. Like for instance, you could go out and steal anything you want up to $950 and, and it'd be a misdemeanor. And so they just catch and release you. So what the impact is, is that folks like Walmart, and Food Max and other places that stay open uh, later at night can't protect themselves anymore unless they're going to hire thugs to just beat you down, right? I think if in the in the small businesses you just hire thugs, uh, private security to come out and just just take you out back and beat you up, right? That will settle that. When I was in the Soviet Union right after the fall of communism. Uh, you could not enter a store. They would, uh, you would get in line outside and they would ask you what you wanted, take a list, the employees, they would go inside and pick it up and bring it out and you would pay for it. You pay for it in advance. Then they go pick up your product and give you a bag full of stuff. Now that's essentially what amazon.com is doing, right? Wiki man did amazon.com. They're not experiencing no theft, right? Because right? The, Cause you pay for it in advance that they're doing the Russian way, but just high tech. You look at it on, on the screen, pick it out, buy it, pay for it. And then they guarantee it's going to be on your front porch. If you got Amazon prime, uh, within like 48 hours or 24 hours or something. Right? So this thing of providing service at the local level. People say, Oh, I like, I don't like, I like to be able to go in the store and, you know, do this, that, well, maybe that's going to come by the wayside. If the government in California, uh, lets criminals just have their way. Right. And in fact, I, I was talking to a neighbor of mine who's a mechanic and he was telling me that that Harbor Harbor, is it Harbor freight for Harbor freight? I've never been in there, but it usually they used to have these big, they used to come in and just take up a big building and sell all these tools. He said they don't even stop people. They just walk out the side door, and if they steal, they steal. And uh, they, 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 the, the cost to stop them, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just an amazing shakedown in California. It's not happening everywhere. This week, I noticed uh, one of my friends I used to work with at Marysville Pol Police Department uh, who, who retired, uh, he said, we're gone. We're headed to Arizona. He said, I, I'm tired of losing the rights that I fought for, for all those years, protected the rights of 
citizens in in our area and in other I, I don't know where all he worked but he worked for he was like the technology guy at Marysville uh, and so when there was they needed to look in people's computers and phones after they arrested him he was the the geek right that could do that as well as be a street cop so anyway I wish him well he he went out injured eventually and and uh, but people are just uh, you know I was commenting to somebody the other day that people the people that are leaving are conservatives. They're not liberals because uh, they believe in what's going on here. So uh, maybe I should tell you what you're listening to if you care. Uh, this is The Patriot, 1410 AM. This is Lou Benninger, and this is Live with Lou. I'm here with Wiki Man. He's keeping keeping us all flying today. I had a list of all the, the ways you could listen to us, and I can't find it. Now, I don't, did you email it to me yesterday uh, or last week? I'll have to. Maybe you could resend it to me. I was going to tell you because I I was freaking out. I don't. Are we even live stream this morning? Are we? We're, we're live stream. We're back live stream. Somebody didn't pay the bill, and so we went off the air live stream. But then, as I said, hey, I'm sorry for you guys out in Idaho, and and uh, somebody was listening. Where was somebody listening? Oh, Chile, Chile. You know, that for you that graduated from American high school, that's not like in Southern California. That's like in another country, Chile, Chile. That's not like the where you eat lunch. That's a country, C-H-I-L-E. I, we got a listener down in Chile now. He's down there working. So we went international. But I didn't realize, because I'm not too techie, that, that you could, there's all kinds of radio live stream that if you don't want to use the live stream out here, people figured it out themselves. People are amazing. So uh, you can go on. If you're out in a fringe area, we're reaching, I don't know, four or five counties here in the state of Jefferson, Northern California, they call it, but we call it the state of Jefferson because we're done with California. And uh, so when you get out so far with just a radio signal, it gets a little funky. So you can tap into kmycradio.com wikiman said the live stream is working over here and then hit on the listen live or you can look like uh the the people from uh over in idaho they said they were listening to it on streama s-t-r-e-e-m-a.com rick over there in idaho said streama.com is how we listen and others, there's four or five different uh, hookups, apps you can listen to on your phone. All new to me. I'm slow. I'm really slow. I need somebody to hold my hand through all this stuff. So you, you, you sent it over. He, Wikiman said he sent it over to me. Oh, here we go. Ways to listen. Okay, here we go. TuneIn.com, T-U-N-E-I-N.com, and Streama, S-T-R-E-E-M-A.com. Or go to your app store and click on Simple Radio. Just two words, Simple Radio. And that will lead you to, I guess you probably have to pick KMYC. So anyway, there's some new ways to connect with us and, and uh, get us in, you know, nice and clear and in color. So check it out. Uh, if you want to call today, we can take a call. We are picky. Some people threaten. They said, Lou, we're going to call you one of these days. Uh <laughs> they said, "Oh, we <laughs> we should have called you," uh, but I said, "Well, I'm I'm pro-choice, so I may not take the call." These are friends of mine. Even they still they even laughed and stayed friends. Seven four two fifty five fifty five five three zero seven four two fifty five fifty five. Monty Hecker. I was talking to him before I came on the air. Mon Monty Hecker is a supporter of this show. He he said, "I'm across the road from you today." I said, "What do you mean you're across the road from me?" He said, "I'm at a car show." I said. Well, usually car shows are in town. He said, no, 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 it's at the flea market out here. And he says, a big, big car show. So anyway, if you're interested in cool cars, I ask him if they don't donate one to trauma intervention program. I said, we could use some help. So uh, tip or trauma inter intervention program, we're raising some money. And uh, But anyway, if you want to go to a cool car show, uh, it's out here on Simpson Lane, just outside of Marysville in Linda, California. And there's a cool car show out here. Monty's a big car man. Uh, but Monty runs Elite Universal Security. And I was the reason I called Monty was because he has his uh, headquarters out on Feather River Boulevard. 
in Linda, and he has signs for Measure K. So if you if you don't want your sales taxes to go up in Yuba County, where we're located, that's where we're broadcasting from, way up on Mount Huth. It's the air so thin this morning. I need to go out get me a one of those oxygen tanks. But uh, they're threatening to raise the taxes one percent sales taxes. So that means if you go in the next ten years, if this passes in any time in the next ten years, if you reside in Yuba County, uh, you're going to have to pay one percent more on everything you buy. And you think, oh, I'll just buy in Nevada County where it's cheaper or, or Sutter County where it's cheaper. I said, well, that works on a lot of stuff. Like you get a set of tires, big stuff you're buying, right? You go buy a computer, you can go buy it outside the County. But if you buy a vehicle that needs to be registered with the department of motor vehicles, and, uh, you could buy it in outer Slombodia, you could buy it in Chile and, and ship it over here. But you will have to pay tax at the Yuba County rate. So if you buy a $30,000 car, $40,000 car, just take one times that, just remove some zeros. That means you're going to pay an extra $300, $400, $500 for one vehicle. Uh, just because you live in Yuba County. That's ridiculous. So you cannot get out of it unless you register the car in another state in the in the uh, the CHP says they are looking for people that are living here, driving their vehicles here. And if they register their car and have Idaho plates, Nevada plates, they're purging. They're after you. If you got Nevada plates, Oregon plates, Arizona, you got plates any place else other than California, you hang around here too long, they're going to be checking you out. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh we got a caller. We're going to, we'll take a caller. We'll change it up a little bit today. Dave, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Dave. What, what's shaking out there? Are you in Yuba city? I am in Yuba city. Thanks for calling. What do you got to say this morning? Good morning to you. Well, good morning to you. Uh, the reason that I called as I told the person earlier was that as I was looking at my sample ballot and I heard somebody else mention this after I'd already marked mine, but nonetheless, I think that the conduct of Feinstein involved in this case with the uh, judge was totally uh, inconsistent with anybody who was taking a responsible view and who probably deserves to be voted out of office because she only has one opponent uh, that typically most people might not be interested in voting for because he's probably even more extreme than her. Uh, I think it would be a very good idea for people who are dissatisfied with Feinstein, even though they might not otherwise vote for the, her opponent, should vote for that opponent, because at least that opponent would have no seniority in the Senate if he were to beat Feinstein. And it would send a message that you can abuse some of the people some of the time, but you can't abuse all of them all of the time and that it would be a, a great thing to do to see her voted out of office and send a message. You're not as strong as you think you are when you start uh, abusing people, uh, using the laws unfairly against the population. So that's my suggestion. I hope the people are listening to your station will take it to heart and pass the word. Dave, thank you so much. I've been thinking along those same lines, but I appreciate you taking the time to call and uh, vote twice if you can. Well, I, I do believe in law and order. I do think that obviously the people that we would say are not on the far left are probably very dissatisfied with California. I'm with but you. There's one, there's one thing that people need to always remember. Before people actually make a change, it usually requires hitting rock bottom. Uh, Rock bottom, from our standpoint in this uh, country, and especially California, and I don't think that we have to be separate. I think we have to separate the, the bad from the good. And the ones that are there to destroy what California represented are the ones that need to go. I agree. Uh, to have other people running, because if you look at the elections in uh, the states like Maine and Connecticut, well, the liberal-type uh, individuals went to conservative states and took over politically because technically most conservatives are older. 
And the younger people are always easily swayed by what they think is uh, abuse by seniors. And I mean abuse in the sense that they yeah. don't always seem to relate to them, and they have a whole yeah. different tradition. And new young people like to establish their own traditions, All right. even if those traditions are counterproductive which, in my opinion, has to do with the marijuana law specifically. Yeah. All right, Dave. But, well, Dave, we're going to have to go. Uh, okay. But thank you for dropping that. I, I appreciate the point you made about uh, Feinstein and her opponent. Thank you so much. Well, I thank you for being on this radio. All right. <laughs> See you, Dave. Bye now. All right. You know, Wiki Man, I've been thinking of the same thing. What are we going to do? And I, I am so disgusted with Feinstein and – she is so much dirtier than I even assumed she was when, when I watched her, uh, break to me, every etiquette, every, uh, value, every norm, uh, she would have done anything. I think if she would have been packing her heater that day, maybe she would have just shot Kevin on been done with him. Right. She packs one, right. She claims she packs one, but she didn't want us to take one. So maybe Dave makes a good point. Kevin Leon, now he's called Kevin De Leon. I think he maybe wanted to fall Ponce de Leon. You remember the he was he found a, searching for the fountain of youth. Was that Ponce de Leon, the the uh, world explorer? But Kevin didn't think his name was sexy enough. Kevin Leon. Uh <laughs> say, hey Kevin Leon. No, I said, I'm Kevin De Leon. Okay, I got you. Wear the tight pants and the slick shoes. All right, so maybe we should vote for Kevin and just uh, tell Feinstein to move on to the care home and, uh, you know, invest in the Botox industry. Man, she's looking gnarly. Jeez. Well, um, I would just mention that Monty Hecker uh, is a sponsor, and, and uh, he wanted to – I was checking on the signs on Measure K. If you're a Yuba County resident, Measure K – is going to raise your tax and they're and they they're all talking how it's all about public safety now they're up in the, in the up in the foothills this week saying oh well no it's just a general tax and it's not all about public safety but we really need the money and uh wait and and they ended up uh robert bendorf said well you know we're not worried about howard jarvis tax Prison association we just are worried about the people we just want the people to have their say. Honestly, they have taken $200,000. By the time this is over, they will have taken $200,000 of the people's tax money, turned it around, and propagandized them with it to convince them to take more of their money, to vote to take more of their money by scaring the hell out of them, by going up there in the foothills and telling them they're not going to be able to get any uh, emergency response unless they pass more more taxes, pay more taxes, uh, which isn't the truth. And so, uh, if they want somebody else to figure out this law enforcement thing, maybe I, I like, I'm a, I'm with Dave, the caller that just called in. He said, he said something that most people miss. And I was reminding somebody I was talking to this week that a lot of times we just want to fix something and, and like whatever, wherever we're at right now, we just want to get, make it better. But a lot of times in order to make it better, it's got to get a lot worse to people that just get so like, for instance, this Kavanaugh thing, I didn't like the way it went down, but the way it went down reveals how funky the, the liberals are in this country and how they don't operate according to any, uh, rule of thumb, any norm, any value, any godly principle, they'll just take you out. Right. And um, I find even the people I work with in jail and prison have more have more value and more scruples than the liberals. And so the Kavanaugh hearing getting as bad as it did may motivate many conservative people to actually get off their butt, register to vote, and say, you know something, we're going to lose this whole thing. And uh, my ability to go down and drink a beer every once in a while and just hang out is going to be is going to be goofed up. A lot of the liberties and freedoms I think I got are not going to be happening because people are going to be jerking me around. And the whole concept of the in the basic concept that people uh, accept for granted of innocent till proven guilty 
and somebody can make an accusation and ruin your whole life and never, ever be held accountable. You ever think about that? Like somebody can throw you under the bus and never be held accountable legally for it. That's what these people back there did. The very people on that judiciary committee that uh, they couldn't hold a candle to the the level of character of the judge candidate, Kavanaugh, like these people are liars and cheats. Did you find it fascinating that no one even looked into Dianne Feinstein's issue of hiring a, a spy driver? Nobody, it's just like, oh, let the guy go. Oh, it's just like, oh, he couldn't pass a drug test or something, so he let him go. It's just no, no, no harm, no foul, right? No harm. No, nobody's like wanting to remove her from the Judiciary Committee or the Committee on uh, Intelligence. She's on these all these top committees. Nobody's removing her. Nobody's questioning her ethics. Nobody's like doing anything. But we're worried about plastic straws in California and whether Kavanaugh had a beer. It's just un. Is that unbelievable? And then Blumenthal, who didn't just make one statement about uh, Richard Br Blumenthal, the senator from Connecticut. Uh, he didn't just make one comment about him being a, a combat vet in Vietnam. He he repeated it for years until somebody finally said, oh, uh, man, I'll follow up and look at that. See where that guy served. And he didn't serve anywhere over there. The guy's a, just a f flame out liar. And yet he's actually standing in judgment. You know, it reminded me in, in the payoffs of old, old uh, Ford, Dr. Ford, reminded me of them paying off people to uh, testify against Jesus in, in, the, in the trial. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, well, he did that. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, he did that. The guys are just lying to get a few, few shekels. You know, they're little, all these people are little whores, right? They'll do whatever you want for a couple bucks. So uh, the whole group of them, the Kamala Harris, slept her way to the top. Screwing a, screwing a guy that had a wife and kids in San Francisco, Willie Brown, and and you're going to trust her integrity to criticize a guy that's faithful to his wife and raising her kids, or raising his kids, and a good dad, unbelievable. And then a Booker who admits fondling a girl, right? And he's going to be all over. It's just unbelievable that they would actually, the reason they have the courage to go on television or the media, where, whatever you want to call it anymore, I don't even have a television, but just see it on the media. The reason they can do that is they think that everybody's going to just do nothing about it, right? If, Like I've been tell, talking to my neighbors. It's no different than my neighborhood. I've been talking to my neighbors. I said, let's clean up the street. Because we got all kinds of homeless people. We got people taking the crap on the street. Uh, we got people stealing stuff. We got people uh, doing nuts of stuff, right? And I said, hey, we need to clean up the street because and clean up our yards. Because if you don't do that, people think nobody cares. So you can get away with that at, at the top echelons of our country. They can just get away with trashing people because they think nobody's going to do anything about it and dave makes a good point the caller he says if we vote her out at least we'll say yeah uh we may not like the other guy either but at least he's not as damaging as you and uh, maybe we'll get him out in four years but at least you're not going to get away with doing that uh no matter whether you do it to a democrat it's a human being for god's sake right you can't just trash human beings like that it's it's in fact, I saw somebody made the comment. Let me just say, uh, in fact, it was Gary Bauer who started the family uh, something something coalition. Gary Bauer. He says, sadly, the left demands more due process for accused terrorists at Guantanamo Bay than for well-qualified Supreme Court nominees. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, whether it's A, C, L, U, or whatever, they will they will uh, give more due process to an illegal alien who's killed people in the United States, sanctuary cities and all that, than they will to a guy who's done his best. Not perfect. None of us are perfect. Uh, God help me if I ever ran for something like that. They would like, oh, my God. They would like, 
It would be un. It would be ugly out there. Uh, but to trash a person, you know, they hate that. He's white. He's actually married. He's married to a woman, and he's had a couple of kids that actually he he pulled that off on his own. He didn't he didn't need some kind of trans, you know, borrowed somebody else's sperm or whatever, and jerked around his wife. You know what I mean? And uh, he actually has lived a pretty good life, done pretty good, and behaved himself. But, oh, no, he's like the witch, man. He's like he's like a Satanist or something. He's like bad news. We'll be right back. We got two and a half hours to go. Theater is proud to bring to the stage Louisa May Alcott's beloved story, Little Women. This original musical adaptation takes us through the tender moments, the tumultuous tests, the highs, the lows, the changes and surprises of life. This Christmas, start your festivities with a trip to Concord with the adorable March Sisters. Performances are November 30th through December 4th at 7 p.m. nightly. Except for Sunday, December 2nd at 3 p.m., we are hosting a special high tea matinee for $12 per person. All nightly performances are free of charge. Join us at the Embassy Theater, located at Highway 99 and Eager Road in Yuba City. High tea tickets available at Church of Glad Tidings. Call 530-671-3160. You're listening to Live with Lou, and uh, three of the people on this Judiciary Committee that uh, just couldn't find anything good to say about uh, Judge Kavanaugh <clears throat> were also uh, in charge when uh, Bill Clinton was facing impeachment back in 1998. These people are like 100 years old. Did you know that? They're just being held together by chemicals and uh photoshop but despite the fact that bill clinton lied under oath to a grand jury despite the fact that almost a dozen women accused him of rape and other sexual assaults despite despite the fact that he lied about sex with an intern until dna evidence proved his lies uh they could not find it in themselves to vote for impeachment. Those people were Dick Durbin, Patrick Leahy, and Diane Not-So-Fine Feinstein. Now, these are the same people that today uh, just can't stomach uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Well, I want to fin finish up some of my loose ends from the last half hour. And uh, Monty Hecker... Uh, who runs elite universal security. I was talking to him before the show to determine, uh, if he has any signs out there for prop six or measure K or governor Cox, potential governor Cox, hopeful governor Cox, if God can pull off a miracle here. And, uh, he said he has plenty of K signs. So that is the Yuba County, uh, no on K, no on more sales tax in Yuba County. So you can get a sign. Listen, if you just say, oh, yeah, I'm no on K, you need to do more than to have an opinion. You need to do something. You know, the days of having an opinion and having that have much impact are over. What you need to do is you need to convince somebody else of your view whether you're up in the fifth district and you're wanting to write in John Missler's name because there's no other good alternative or you're against taxes 
so you vote against Measure K? Or you're against paying an extra seven or eight hundred dollars a year for road taxes that you're already paying some of the highest taxes in the state in the United States and you're gonna vote yes on measure six, you need to you need to convince your neighbors of the same. You need to get them on board. You need to get them registered. You think, oh, that's too much work. Well, okay. You see what we got? If if you watch anything of this judiciary committee, that's what you get for just thinking you can just coast and get a free ride in America. You're not going to get that. And the people that are moving out of California are not welfare recipients. They are not illegal aliens. They are not liberals. They are not socialists. They're not communists. Those people are staying. So if you want to like give up the ship and leave the ship to the cockroaches and rats, then leave. A lot of my friends have left. Or I'm going to play you a clip later on today from the Fresno County District Attorney Lisa Smitkamp that should get your attention, and maybe it'll grow you a backbone because a lot of you just don't have one. You, you're actually a shame. Uh, if our founding fathers could speak up, they were saying they would be saying shame on you. I don't know why I spent so much effort and risked my life and my family's fortune for you. Like, you're just like a mooch. You're a leech. So, uh, anyway, oh, by the way, last week I mentioned, uh, because some people contact me and they say, what are you going to do on this proposition? Or I haven't had time to look at it. Or what about candidates? So I don't don't try to get everybody to do what I'm doing uh, for specific races. But if you want to know what I'm doing, I don't mind sharing that with you as long as you don't bug me about it and argue with me about it because I don't have time to argue with you, okay? I don't mind you not doing what I'm doing. I'm okay. So I gave out my my number that you can text me your contact information if you want me to send lose picks, which is something I do every year for my friends because it saves me a lot of phone time answering a lot of questions. I just put out the list. It's like a menu. You like it or you don't or you go to another restaurant, right? There you go. So I'm going to give it out again today. Last week, I don't know, maybe almost 10 people or something. You know, that's almost almost my whole listening audience. They There was almost 100% response. So uh, if you're interested, I'll give you the number, and I'll give it one more time sometime today, 530-713-1838. 530-713-1838. If you just send me your email, or if you don't have that and you want to, your your physical address, I'll send it over to you, mail it to you. I don't mind spending the the stamp, whatever. Uh, And I'll send you loose picks. The reason I, if you wondered, if you contacted me last week and you're wondering, well, he didn't even respond last week. Well, the reason I didn't, I'm not finished with loose picks yet. So I'm still working on, I'm almost done. Just a couple details. Probably this week I'll get it all done and send it out because I know you're getting your sample ballots. And as Dave said, he's already looking at his sample ballot. And uh, Dave, the caller in the first half hour, he from Yuba City said he was already working on his stuff and he had an idea about that Senate race. So he said, I'm not going to vote for somebody as crude and rude and dishonest and corrupt as Dianne Feinstein. And I'm, I'm with him there. And he said, I'm going to vote for a week senator called david leon or now called david or no uh, not david leon but kevin kevin leon or kevin de leon and uh so anyway that's that so monty hecker says he's got major k signs and you can drive by his place at 5548 Federer boulevard and linda or oliver's they call it just get off highway 70 on federal boulevard and you can just take you a minute to drop in there 24 hours a day service 5548 federal boulevard if you want if you need some help with securing stuff man uh, people are always stealing stuff nowadays you get on those drugs and then you got to go take somebody else's property 749-0280 he'll come and help secure your property and keep people from pooping on your steps that's old monty he's like on it he's like 
catches people. So, and, and Pete, he's looking for helpers. He's got so much business all up and down Butte County, Yuba County, Sutter County, Redding up there in Redding, Red Bluff area. He's, he's like doing business all over. He can help you. So he can put you to work and he's got classes you can take. They'll hook you up. Look at API hyphen academy.com and they will hook you up and he'll teach you how to shoot and be legal and use a taser and pepper spray. He's got it going on. So October 13th and 14th, they have uh, firearms training. You can get your concealed weapons permit and all that kind of stuff. So uh, check it out. And if you need major case signs, listen, put up a sign for God's sake. I mean that seriously, literally, for God's sake. Do something, right? God is not going to come down and, and take care of this country if you're not willing to do jack, right? So get out and vote. Stand up for what's right. Figure out what's going on. If you don't have time to look at the propositions, send me your deal. I'll give you my perspective. I'm not saying you got to vote. I'm not going to stalk you. Uh, I got other things to do. I got other things to do. So, um, oh, by the way, there is a used Ford for sale. Uh, contact Diane Feinstein for more information. Uh, 202-224-3841. Used Ford for sale. 202-224-3841. Diane Feinstein, if you want to get used and abused and kicked to the curb, uh, that would be hook up with the Feinstein. Just a thought. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, Lisa Murkowski. You know Lisa Murkowski. She's the senator from Alaska. Remember Sarah Palin was the governor of Alaska? And uh, But there was a guy named Murkowski that was the governor of Alaska, right? And I think Lisa Murkowski took Ted Stevens' spot. Was Ted Stevens the guy up there that was corrupt? and they kicked him out or something. He was a dirty dog or something. Anyway, she got appointed. Dad, isn't that something? Dad appointed his daughter to be the senator for the state. And uh, back in the early 2000s, and she's been there ever since. And she's a uh, she's got an R after her name, but that's just, uh, she's a poser is what she is. She's posing as a Republican, but she voted against Kavanaugh. And so Laura Ingraham, who introduced me, she, she comes on the show every Saturday morning and introduces me. And so she is on Fox News. You know Laura Ingraham. She's, she's on the show on the station here every morning during the week, Monday through Friday. But she tweeted that maybe she'll move over to Alaska and run against Murkowski. And I thought, well, that would be interesting. And she's got a lot of creden good credentials, right? And I, I don't want to take time to go into all of them, but you can look her up. But the other person who just came surfaced, who's been quiet for quite a while, Sarah Palin. And Sarah Palin, I don't even know whether she's living uh, right now in Alaska. She did move down to Arizona for a while, but she still has probably a business and property up there in Wasilla area. And so maybe Sarah will run against Murkowski. Wouldn't that be good? I think it'd be great. Uh, we need to make a change if a person like that, uh, you know, I don't care what labels after her name. She's got bad judgment. You know, that's the thing that this Kavanaugh hearing, it's like it, uh, I liked what Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham was not a favorite of mine, but I like what Lindsey said. He said, you know, I've been fair with all kinds of, uh, judicial appointments, regardless of what initial they had after their name. I was fair with them. And I just looked at some people that would look at the law and judge, uh, things according to the constitution, right. And just say, Hey, we're staying in the right lane regarding the law. But he says, you people, uh, are always wanting these litmus tests, either they're Democrat or, you know, we're only going to vote for a Democrat. And he said, I voted for people on both sides of the aisle that I felt were qualified smart people that we're going to uphold the constitutions and the way of America. But what we have now are people that are trying to overthrow America. Are you getting the drift? Are you just still asleep out there? Are you under the influence of Oxy or Narco? Are you doing heroin? Are you like a meth addict listening today? Are you out of your mind or are you asleep? I think a lot of people are asleep at the switch. 
It's time to wake up because there is a uh, there's nobody shooting yet, but it's uh, it's as gnarly as people getting shot. And when you get your character like Kavanaugh, will never be the same. He will never be the same because of what's happened to him. It makes a difference when people trash you like this, because a lot of people believe a lie is what happens. They believe a lie. Uh, same thing happened to Dr. Cassidy when Mary Jane Griego, who he who doesn't really even have the character to be in the same room as Dr. Cassidy. She is just a little tramp from Oliverst, a uh, fry cook who just for two years tried to destroy a, a local medical doctor. And she, she is our local Diane Feinstein, just ruthless, uh, dishonest, uh, and a bitter, uh, young lady who, uh, who's actually, I think her dad was even disappointed in her, but, uh, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll do anything for you as long as you ca give her some cash. And now she's over there working for the, the white Obama Garamendi. In fact, her and her old chubby partner, John Nicoletti over there, just uh, rubbing elbows, got theirself a desk over there, rubbing elbows and, and slinging stuff for the, uh, liberal garamendi well i wanted to talk about uh let's see oh we got a few minutes here before 10 o'clock i wanted to talk about diamond dean price diamond dean we talked about here uh gee i don't know a few months ago because i stumbled stumbled across the fact that he was the second highest paid as far as i can tell law enforcement official in the state of California, and he was serving right up the road here in little old Gridley. Gridley that just is, uh, let's see, how many square miles is Gridley? Is it two point something? I had it down here somewhere one day. Two point something square miles, a little over 6,000 people. And the 2018-2019 contract for Diamond Dean Price, chief of police, he was scheduled to earn $332,743 in the fiscal year 2018-2019. So I did a survey of key cities around the state of California, and the only one I could find pay, being paid more is in L.A. They were making about 25000 a year more. And I thought, how in the world were, were these city council people? Uh, did they not know how much police chiefs are getting paid around them? Like, oh, it's 2.08 square miles, 6,074 residents. And uh, I thought, how could they make a decision? What did they think? Nobody would want to live there or, or work there in the city of Gridley? And I was thinking about Chris Sachs, who just took over at uh, the city of Marysville. And I don't know what Chris is getting paid, but let me just, let's just guess at 130000 right? And uh, maybe it's 150000 Maybe it's 160000 you count benefits. I don't know. But say it's under 2000 200000 That If Chris is getting 160000 with benefits, that's one half what the chief of police of Gridley, which is – uh, serving less, uh, about half the residents. In other words, Sachs is serving about 12,000, Dean Price 6,000. But in Marysville, we got thousands and thousands of cars jacked up through here every day because unfortunately 70 and 20 got to work their way through town and you got all these traffic accidents and gnarly stuff and crazy stuff. And, and it's a, the county seat, you know, it's a, it's a busier place. And I just thought, what, what got into the city council's mind? And so they, I'm not saying it was because of what I did, but I just wrote an article about it for the territorial dispatch. And, and they distribute territorial dispatches up there in Gridley. I guess it got the word got out. Right. And, uh, but the other thing, it isn't just, it doesn't stop there. There's a whole cadre of leadership in Gridley that are paid some fantastic money for just managing six, a, a little tiny postage stamp town of 6,000 people. I'm not being demeaning. It's, it's a nice town. But it's like, why do you have to pay 
all this money. Where do you get all this money? Are they like slinging cocaine out of there? Gridley's new city administrator, who's been there a year or so, Paul Eckert, collects for 2018-19, 200, almost $207,000, or $34 per person for his services. That means every kid to old, the oldest person, every person. It's costing $34 per person in the city to fund a city manager to make decisions over just the workings of the city. It's unbelievable. And, uh, and there's all kinds of people besides him. There's a finance guy and there's a, you know, public works guy and there's head, they get, they handle their own electricity up there. It's like, Whoa, baby. It's like incredible. The, the city manager, Walter Munchheimer, before he left was getting $131,692 Eckert's for twice the, the population and a bigger city. Uh, so 131,000 compared to Gridley's Paul Eckert, 207,000. Whoa. And then Aaron Easton before Chris Sachs took over was getting 155,000 compared to Diamond Dean got 332,000, almost 333,000 people. What is the city council thinking? And you know what they said in an article that I, I, I saw an article, KCRA wrote an article about it. And they said, he said, one of the city council guys has been on there for decades is he was a really fine guy. I mean, what's a really fine guy worth? Why don't they give him a half, why don't they give him a half a million a year? What about a million? Like, where does this end? It's like I, I saw the other day, they said on, I think it was, I think it was KFBK. They were saying that how governor Brown personally is known as a frugal person. Like when he first got elected in Sacramento back in the seventies and he wouldn't live in the governor's mansion and he just got an apartment downtown. He drove an old Plymouth. And so, you know, he was a young guy, single guy, and everybody made a big deal about that. Like, in other words, he's not part of the swamp. Right. And, um, so on the radio this week, it was saying that his, you know, they have a committee that ch that changes the salary now of legislators and, and the court you know, court and the governor, et cetera. So they changed his salary. He's getting 202,000, right? And I thought, isn't that interesting? He's over 40 million people, right? Close to 40 million. And Robert Bendorf gets 270 some thousand. And he's over 70 some thousand people. It's just not right. And then they turn around and say, we don't have enough money to pay us and pay law enforcement. They don't ever bring up themselves, but when you look at on trans, go to transparent California, Yuba County had, or Yuba County hasn't even turned in their figures for 2017. A lot of places have they, the newest, in fact, when I contacted Yuba County, they had not even reported anything to transparent California ever. And, and I contacted them. I said, how come you guys don't do that? Oh, well, you know, oh, 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 oh. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough attorneys. You don't have enough bookkeepers. They got over a thousand employees. I was telling the guy the other day who's interviewing me he, uh, from uh, Capital Public Radio. I said, you know that they got an employee for every 73 people in the county? Do you think, do you think that our founding fathers would need that they, that they said, oh, we, you know, for every, every handful of people, we like for my, that's, that's, if we added up all the people on my block, maybe a block and a half. That's about that many. I got to have a county employee watching over me. It's crazy. Just lo we've lost our minds, people. The, the whole they ought to can the whole city government up there and and save themselves some money. We'll be right back. In the uh, article by KCRA, uh, they were inaccurate. They said council member Chris Williams told KCRA that he put Price's position on the agenda in part because of his benefits package would stand at, stands at slightly over $250,000. Now, I don't know where Chris 
got that information. Maybe that's his old, uh, his old contract. But the new contract for uh, Dean Diamond Dean was three hundred thirty-two. That's a that's a lot more than two hundred fifty. Three hundred thirty-two seven hundred forty-three dollars in fiscal year two thousand eighteen nineteen. Now, I was talking to a guy that wanted to talk to me from Capital Public Radio this week about Proposition 6. No, let's see. Sorry. Uh, not Proposition 6. It was Measure K. He wanted to know about Measure K because I wrote the opposition article or argument on the ballot for Measure K. I think it has my name on it. And he said, why'd you do that? I said, because I'm against it. All right. It just, well, why, why was it you? I said, well, because I figured uh, nobody else probably do that. He said, well, how'd you know nobody else would do it? I said, well, you know, I wasn't sure, but nobody else was stepping up, I didn't think. So um, I didn't want to leave it blank and think that people would assume if there's no opposition to argument, people would just think it's no big deal to give more and more money to government. I want you to think, if you look at every single thing you do, you either have to get permission or pay or do both. Pay the government. Ask their permission. I want to have a I want to have a car wash. Ask their permission. I I want to go do this. We got to pay a little fee. Do this, do that. Taxes on every single thing. Listen people, you it's it's uh, if you believe that you're not paying it enough taxes, you have the what they call the Stockholm syndrome. Just Google it and study it. Stockholm syndrome. When people that are making a quarter, I'm just assuming that a lot of you out there are making fifty thousand or less a year, sixty thousand or less a year. Maybe you're only making twenty five thousand. You're letting people that are making a quarter of a million dollars every 12 months tell you that you need to pay them more money so they can pay themselves a quarter of a million dollars a year. Does that make sense to you? That does not make sense to me ever. I have never been confused about that. You're paying a county administrator 280 I don't they haven't even reported what they got in 2017 I'm working off 2016 figures for Yuba County nearly 280,000 for a guy to make decisions over a government that has way too many people 670 employees a thousand uh, you know we got I don't know how many employees Caltrans has 20,000 employees and Governor Brown's over Caltrans and he makes 202,000 right he's running the whole thing and so for I am all for having enough law enforcement here here's the problem people they have committed themselves to pay certain types of wages and to have certain amount of employees to all these government employees and it's just we can't afford the help folks we just can't afford the help and you can't afford to pay people for instance, when Sheriff Dur Durfer retired, I think he was getting paid, I don't know, 260000 plus the benefits and everything. After serving, you know, he served over 30 years. And he was a great sheriff and a great public employee, hardworking guy. But I want, I want you to look at the impact. During his retirement ceremony, there were a lot of sheriffs that came to honor him, which was a good deal. But I was just thinking about it. We are paying for Sheriff Durfer plus Sheriff Tyndall plus Sheriff Black plus Sheriff Miller. And I don't know how many more are still out there alive. We're paying for all of them for the rest of their life. Plus, we're, we're paying for the active Sheriff Wendell Anderson. Now... Now you think, well, Lou, you know, you know, well, you know, people have retirement. Listen, listen, the, the difference between that retirement and my retirement is I put money aside that's been hopefully earning some mon more money. So it helps me with my retirement, right? If it doesn't earn money, that's my loss, right? I set money aside while I was making money instead of spending it all so I could have money when I didn't when I wasn't earning any money, like right now, we're talking for food out here today. 
But all the way the pension plan works at CalPERS, which is totally screwed up, is that they commit to pay everybody a defined amount for the rest of their days on Earth. It's it's broke. You can't do that. You can't pay four or five former sheriffs when you when you're trying to pay for an active sheriff, Wendell Anderson, love Wendell and all that stuff. But how can you afford Wendell when you're still paying out of the general fund for all those other sheriffs? Because you didn't set money aside for them, and they they were picking up a lot of the. In other words. I had to pay 100% of whatever I wanted to retire on. I had to pay 100% of that in a savings account or mutual funds or something, something, some kind of vehicle to hold that money for me, right? I had to pay that 100%. I had to set, set aside certain money every month. Government employees don't set aside all that money. They take part of that money out of, the, out of our tax money. In other words, we're paying twice. We're paying them money. They're taking a little bit out of their salary. And then the then out of the general fund more is being paid in. Then when CalPERS has mismanaged those funds, or we didn't give them enough, then they come back and say, "Well, we need more money because those guys haven't died yet that you retired. They're living too long, and we didn't earn enough money on the money we projected." In other words, they used to project that they would earn seven point two five percent per year on their money, but they they've screwed up. They have. They haven't earned it. This is how crazy it is. CalPERS is going broke. Did you know that? But they just gave an $84,000 bonus to the CEO plus a 4% raise. Now, that's how government works. You can be going broke, and everybody still gets raises and bonuses. How does that work? That doesn't work in my family budget. If I haven't earned much money in my savings and investments, I cannot take money out or I'm just going to end up on the streets. You get it? Or if I'm running a business and it has not been a good year and we just like broke even or went in the red, I cannot give employees bonuses even if they decide to say, Lou, I'm, if you don't give me a raise, I'm leaving. I'd say, well, I, maybe you better take that other job. They're a better manager than I am because I can't afford you. And we get all freaked out, and you've been sort of kind of like, oh, my God, everybody is leaving. Well, maybe they should leave. If we can't afford to keep them, let them go where they can make more money and, and see if Yolo County and uh, Roseville, Placer County, all these places, obviously they're doing a lot better financially. And so we just, you know, in other words, my dad told me, Lou, live according to your means. Don't try to live like the guy down the street that's got a lot more money than you have. Just live according to what you got, and don't worry about all that. In fact, the Bible says don't compare yourself to other people like that. Be content with what you got. doesn't mean to be satisfied with being poor, but it's, it's not be envious of other people. So if a, if a deputy can go down and drive an hour or a half an hour, 35 minutes, 45 minutes, and make another 10000 a year, hey, God bless him. We're sad to lose good people, but we got to make ends meet. And it's like, I'm tired of paying taxes for all this stuff. And most of the taxes are being waste. Now, let me, there's all kind. I, I heard an ad on measure six, uh, proposition six, an ad opposing proposition six. Now, if six passes, which is not looking good, six is not looking good. Six is going to repeal the gas tax that you didn't even get to vote on. The legislature voted, uh, two-thirds of them voted to put this tax on us, which is taking an average of over $700 per person that's got a car, et cetera, uh, if you've got a car owner. So if, if $700 per person per year. I want you to think about that. It's a 10-year tax. That means seven grand out of your pocket over the – I mean, what could you do for with seven thousand? Man, I could do a ton with seven thousand dollars. So there, here's what they're saying on the people that are against this tax. You know, they're saying firefighters are against this. The fire, you know, the firefighters are not against this tax. I, I mean, sorry, the, they they're saying on the uh, the advertisement, firefighters are against repealing the tax. 
But I know firefighters that are not against the repealing the tax. You know who's against repealing the tax? The firefighters union. I know police officers that don't want to pay this tax, but their union is against repealing the tax. I know a lot of construction workers that are not against, uh, not for repealing the tax, but their union is, right? So all this union money that all these people paid in, paid in is now coming out and saying, don't repeal the tax. We need better roads. Well, what happened to all the other $200 billion that the, the government took in last this last year? $200 billion budget. $200 billion, and you can't fix any roads with that money. It's just all committed. No, it isn't all committed. They just chose to not fix any roads because did you know that Governor Brown actually said this? He called y'all freeloaders. Do you feel like a freeloader? Maybe if you're collecting welfare, food stamps, uh, Section 8 housing, WIC, uh, free education, you know, you, you don't have any skin in the game. Maybe you are a freeloader. But I don't feel at all like a freeloader. I'm feeling like I'm paying my fair share and your fair share in a lot of days. A lot of people that aren't paying jack. And so they're saying on the radio, on these anti-Measure 6 ads trying to defeat this repeal. In fact, we're getting fought. Even uh, the Attorney General of the uh, California, Xavier Becerra, wrote a fictitious, or a, uh, not a fictitious, but a fraudulent explanation that this, instead of this, instead of saying this measure will repeal the, the, uh, the increase in road taxes and DMV fees, which would have been the truth, they couldn't tell the truth because they're dishonest, corrupt criminals. Uh, they had to put that this is going to take away money from our roads. When, for God's sake, for the last 40 years, Democrats, liberals in the state of California have robbed money from our roads. In fact, I just read something where in the trucking fees alone, they take a billion dollars. That's a billion dollars a year of trucking fees, and they just put it in the general fund, and they will not do anything to fix the roads. And then they say, oh, well, if you, <clears throat> if you repeal this, you're going to pay for it and blowing out tires and this and that and the other thing. Well, the fact is, I don't often I agree with Assemblyman James Gallagher these days, but at least James has fought this all the way along and said there's plenty of money in the budget to pay for our road repairs. We don't need this SB1 road repair and accountability uh, law that got passed, and we're paying on. You're paying an extra. You've probably already paid $350 already on this. So here's some key facts, and you're going to be lied to all throughout the media. They're going to say, in fact, I said it. I, I heard it yesterday. They're going to stop all. There's like a 1,000 road projects right now under undergoing. You know, they're, 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 they're shovel ready, and they're digging the dirt. They're like in process, over a 1,000, and they're going to all stop as soon as this is, is passed, and that's a doggone lie. I can't even say the right words on the, the air because they, they'll put me in jail or something. So let me just give you some facts, yes on sec, six facts, that you should, uh, you should vote yes for these reasons. The high cost to you. California's cost of living is skyrocketing higher, and working families can barely keep up. The new gas and car tax hikes are costing the typical family of four more than $700 a year. Two, politicians steal your money. Not a single penny of the gas and car tax, that's DMV fees and car tax, is earmarked for road repairs. Did you hear that? They're not legally earmarked for road repairs. You think, well, don't, won't they? They promise. Honestly, people, get over it. Politicians can spend these funds anywhere they want. You know, some of it's going to food and agriculture. Some of it's going to the Univers University of California for research. Some of it's going for parks, recreation, horse trails, bike. I mean, we can't, you know, we're just, I have never used a horse or a bicycle to do my, my business during the day, run to Walmart, run, run over here, go over here, go over there, uh, go to work, go to the hospital. 
I have never used a bicycle, bicycle trail, or a horse trail that, or a park. They are no benefit to me to do in my everyday life. The politicians, it says here, showing a pattern of diverting funds away from road repairs. If you haven't figured that out by now, honestly, people, I think you need to go and get on Ginkgo Biloba or go see someone that has, to, has some expert advice for you on how to take care of your brain. Number three, wasteful spending of the little bit of money actually spent on roads. Caltrans is notoriously wasteful with the money. In fact, it says an independent audit revealed billions, billions with a B in waste and projects cost costing taxpayers 470% more than the national average. Let me help you out in all of us with this. That means for every dollar that's spent in Nevada or Utah or Idaho or Arizona for roads and they get something accomplished with that dollar, it's costing us $5. $4.70 to do the same type of work in California. If you don't think you're getting screwed every day but Sunday by the government and government's connections with the unions and paying way too much, you just, honestly, people, you deserve to be poor. Number four, we already pay one of the highest gas tax rates in the nation, and that money is more than enough to fix our roads, according to Assemblyman Gallagher and Senator Jim Nielsen. The politicians are fraudulently diverting the money. A coalition has filed a ballot measure to put this better alternative to a public vote, and that is Measure 6. And we have signs we've been putting up around Yuba County and Sutter County called Yes on 6. Repeal the gas tax. And when you hear, oh, my God, if you repeal that gas tax, they're going to stop. You know, we had we have our public works guy, Mike Lee, in Yuba County. He makes a, nearly a quarter of a million dollars a year telling people that are poor that they need to pay $700 more a year or we're not going to have good roads in Yuba County. Now, Mike may have, may have drunk the Kool-Aid. But that doesn't mean you have to. He is not speaking the truth, or he's just plain an idiot, right? Now, Mike is an engineer. He's got far, he stayed in school. I dropped out. But listen, maybe he doesn't have any street smarts. Maybe, uh, maybe you can piss on his boots and tell him it's the first rain of the year. But honestly, people, you can't piss on mine. I, this is, if, if you are having problems figuring out when you're getting stolen from, I can help you with that. And I don't mind helping you with that. Lose picks, you can look at them, choose whatever you want to do. But when you talk about paying your tax dollars, I want you to look at the, where do you think the nicest building in, in Marysville is in Yuba County? It has to be the Caltrans monster. Call, I call it the palace on B Street. And people just walk in and out there, saunter around. Nobody's in a hurry at Caltrans. They walk around drinking their, drinking their lattes. Their own audit of the state of California departments, the various agencies, found this is a while back in 2014 or 2015 that Caltrans had 3,500 workers that they couldn't even find enough for them to do. They thought you could lay them off and not. we wouldn't miss. We would not miss putting a, a stripe on the road, wouldn't even miss them, that they all dropped dead of Ebola, you wouldn't even miss them. Now, I was telling this reporter for California Public Radio, I said, it's sad when you, when, when you start to think the best thing for CalPERS would be a bunch of Californians that are on, retired would drop dead because they're just sucking the money. They're just sucking our money. It's a bad system to promise people a fixed income for the rest of their life is corrupt. Only a union would come up with that stupid idea. And, and it isn't Yuba County residents' fault or responsibility to fix that. I'm sick and tired of supervisors saying, oh, well, it's, it's just, it's out of our hands. It's out of our control. It's the, somebody at the state did that. I'm sick of it. And so therefore we just go along to get along. Hell no, hell no. 
vote against vote against Measure K. You know, I liked what Dave said, the caller in the first half hour. He said, Lou, sometimes things got to get be- worse for people to wake up. And I'm all for that. Let's just get funky. You know, I'm, I'm willing to shoot a couple people fun- uh, messing around my, my uh, block. I don't have a problem with shooting a person that's doing something really gnarly. And maybe we need to take, take matters into our own, own hand. It's a shame when I read that Walmart, do you think Walmart is shutting down because they don't want the business? No, they can't deal with all the criminal elements in the middle of the night. Tweakers. Do you? Th- are you getting a clue that things are out of control? You go to Food Max, they cl- they're closing entrances. They just have one entrance you can slip in and out of after a certain hour at night. And Walmart now is going to shut down part of their store. You can't just go and go in and grab stuff. What do you think that's going to do? It's going to keep me. I'm just going to go on line and buy my stuff, right? Have it dropped at my door. Maybe we need less and less law enforcement to help people to wake up and just say, you know, we can't afford to pay a a county administrator or a public works director a quarter of a million dollars for working some of the days, not even all the days of three of a year. They don't even, you know what I mean? They're not employed every day. And you're, it's unbelievable. They're getting about Bendorf's getting almost a thousand dollars a day of him. In fact, it may be more than a thousand dollars a day of actual work days. That's incredible people. Don't you get it? It's just like, does that bother anybody? Oh, oh, well, down the road, they get a lot more than that. If you, you know, like John Nicoletti says, you got to pay, you got to pay to get good people. Well, you know, it's interesting. He took the job when they were getting half as much. So I guess he was a crappy person. Then he doubled his pay. Then he turns around and says, well, you got to pay to get good people. Well, you took it at half the, half the pay. So. According to James Gallagher, I'll tell you what's going to happen. If by a miracle of God, six passes, those jobs aren't going to stop. Those construction jobs are not going to stop. The legislator is going to vote to fix those road funds. You know why? Because people will vote those. Finally, even Democrats will get the Spaldings to vote their fellow Democrats out of office for jerking them around. You know, Democrats drive cars and have to dodge uh, chunks out. I just drove down to Stockton to deliver a drug, drug addict this week, and I hadn't driven I-5 for a long time. I thought I-5 was the premier highway, right? I had to dodge chunks out of the, the dog on highway going down to Stockton. It was like unbelievable. I thought, you know something. Democrats, at some point, Democrats are going to wake up as well and just say, you know something, I am not stupid. I got to run a business. I got to pay my bills, and I am not going to put up with this garbage and and having them sidetrack all this money. Folks, I, I think truckers, I I was shocked. I, I-5 is almost bumper-to-bumper trucks. It's amazing how much is trucked. Did you realize that 74% of the communities in California, I don't know where the other ones went, but they have all their goods trucked to them? That means every good that you have is being affected by the increase in fuel prices, 20 20 cents on the gallon for diesel. Every item, whether you're eating a, a, a Snickers bar or a burger or you're putting on a new shirt, it's affected by those increase in gas prices. It's unbelievable the amount of gas taxes were they oh well you know we need to all work together no no the, we're getting ripped off people get a clue that's a bad sign right there somebody else is wanting to talk instead of me we'll be right back <laughs> Uh, our apologies, we goofed that clip up a little bit, but we did hear it all uh, once we recovered. But uh, we had to take some uh, heart attack medicine here, and we are all better now. So uh, anyway, we got a call that someone said, hey, we need to know about the Republican, the uh, Constitutional Republican headquarters, the real conservatives over here in Yuba City. We need to get some signs. So uh, 
I want to give them a shout out anyway. It reminded me to get back to business here. And so these guys were help us stay on the air out here. And they have a headquarters at 441 Bridge Street, Suite E in Yuba City. And they're open uh, Monday through Saturday from 5 to 8 at night to help you with literature and signage and what you can do to help on these campaigns for conservatives, okay? So uh, they were carrying Cox signs. They have a variety of signs over there, but you'll just have to call call them up. I'll give you a phone number and a, in a second, but or drop by five to eight, uh, Monday through Saturday. And I know they may have some six. If, if you, uh, if they don't, in fact, if, if today you don't want to wait till tonight, if you'll go by Vans bikes, uh, near it's on a gray Avenue, just South of bridge street, Vans has, uh, six signs, major six repeal the gas tax signs. I picked up some there the other day. But the Republican headquarters should have K, no on K, yes on six, and Cox, and I don't know about the others. So go by and check them out, and uh, they uh, will be on the air tomorrow. They'll probably be talking about that as well tomorrow on Sunday from 1 to 3, Yuba Sutter Political Spotlight. Some of them are on there and talking about what's shaking in our campaigns around the area here. So Yuba Sutter uh, Constitutional Republicans, Go check it out. Let me give you a phone number in case all else fails. You can call Tammy at 701-2845. That's 530 area code. Tammy at 701-2845. So I'm getting some uh, texts here on um, wanting loose picks. If you don't have a computer, don't use a smartphone. You can just call us up here and, and give us your uh, physical address and we will send you a copy out. So if you want to call uh, Wikiman at 742-5555, and, and he'll write down your address, and I'll mail you a copy if you don't have any other technology. Because I know some folks, it's difficult for them, maybe a handful, so I want to make sure I include everybody. So if you want to go old school snail mail, we can do that. I still remember how to do that better than actually some of these other things. So 742-5555. The other ones I will uh, I will send out email uh, to you all. So uh, okay, well uh, we made it through that blip. So let me just move on here and and so we've been talking about the high cost of government, and so how well will government ever change? I th- let me I saw this. This is so cool. I often tell the story, which I'm I'm just fascinated. And it's just been my experience, right? Of growing up here in the Marysville area in Yuba County. And I was a, my dad was a hunter. My dad and my uncles were hunters and, and so they, they're also fishermen, but I just did the hunting thing. So, uh, I, I, I know they had the NRA, they were promoting NRA in the previous show, but I went and took the, uh, twin cities rod and gun training when I was, uh, I think 11 or 12, whenever you could do it and passed. And so I learned how to handle a gun, got my own guns. And back then you could just, uh, as a youngster, you could just, uh, if you lived in, right, I, I lived in East Marysville and I just walked out in the middle of the night, uh, with my gun shells, met my friends and we all walked out of the houses and met at a certain place in town. And we walked out North of Marysville into the, uh, farming areas and we hunted. That was just what we could do then, and nobody stopped us. Nobody gave us a second look. Of course, that was early in the morning, but when we walked back in the afternoon, we had we weren't old enough to drive a car, and we didn't want to take bicycles, but we just walked out and carried all our stuff. And when we walked back in the midday, carrying shotguns, shells, uh, birds, everything over our shoulders, I've never been stopped by a cop carrying a shotgun walking through Marysville back in the day. Today... Uh, you would not make it out of town. And and I want to just read this. It, it says, 125 years ago, you didn't have to ask permission from the government to, I want you to think about this, collect rainwater. In some areas of the United States, they will not allow you under your downspouts to collect rainwater and reuse it, say, to water plants or something, right? You didn't have, I'll just read the whole thing without editorializing. You didn't have to ask the government permission to collect rainwater. 
go fishing, own a piece of property, start a business, renovate your home, build a home, use a transportation vehicle, get married, hunt, own a weapon, cut hair, sell a product, protest, grow food on your property, set up a lemonade stand, or sell some food. Uh, it says, finally, you can do virtually nothing without being extorted by government and obtaining their permission first. If you still think you're free, you're deluding yourself. You live in a tax farm as free-range humans. I couldn't agree more. Now, let me just give you another little shot. This is a huge thing, folks. This election, if you think the Trump election, maybe you just are clueless and you think, oh, Trump just stumbled in there. I don't have time to, to like, educate you on everything. <clears throat> but if you thought the last election was important and this election is no big deal, uh, it doesn't really make any difference what you do with your life. Just go shoot heroin or uh, become an alcoholic or do something really stupid. Uh, this election in 30 days or so is massive, massive impact. I got a, a, a stupid email from the Republicans telling me to call Diane Feinstein and all that. I'm going to change the world by calling her. Let me tell you a way you're going to, that you're going to have a lot more pop. We have a number of congressional races. I don't have time to go through them with you in California where the guys and gals are really facing tough opponent, opponents. They're, they've been targeted by Democrats. If we lose enough congressional races in this country, you're going to see the House of Representatives switch to Democrat. If that happens, then you th you'll think that what's happened to Trump up to this point in terms of controversy and whether – if his hair isn't parted correctly on one day, it's a controversy, right? No matter what he does, cure cancer, whatever, uh, he's wrong. If you think if you think that's been bad, you just let the the Democrats get a, a hold of the uh, House of Representatives or what we call the Congress, and all hell's going to break loose on the impeachment line. So what you could do is find out which races in California, whether you're voting in that area or not, and send them some money uh, because it, it's a lot about money. And you better vote. And not only that, if you got anybody in your house or your kids are turning 18, you better get them to vote because uh, we need all the help we can get in California because when you get down to L.A., those people are really stupid down there. And uh, San Francisco, uh, they're deranged over there. So in Marin County and some of these other uh, areas that uh, they, they don't mind stepping over human feces, and they think that's freedom. All right, so I'm going to just – I'm going to go over this gas tax thing uh, and just give you this measure six. You, you need to vote for it measure six or proposition six to re reject the gas tax you think lou you did i know some of you saying we just did this you just talked to i'm just i i gotta educate you right i want to tell you that over a million californians from all walks of life and from all political persuasions signed the petition to put this on the ballot that's significant people uh you think well there's lots of people in california yeah but a lot of them don't even vote they're underage to vote they can't vote uh, they're in prison. They're they're laying in the ditches, right? So a million people that are legitimate voters sign this. It's going to repeal 12 cents of your tax on gasoline, 20 cents of your tax on diesel, and up to $175 on top of what you're already paying on DMV fees. Uh, it also does something really amazing. It requires, if this passes Prop 6, it requires voter approval for any future gas tax period, any future increases. It, they'll have to come before the voters. That is massive. That is huge. That, it used to be, in other words, the, they overruled us by the legislature agreeing two-thirds. Now they're saying that they can't even do that. If this passes, that's why they hate it. And, and Governor Brown is putting his campaign funds against this, everything. 
It requires voter approval for any future gas tax. Listen, people think, oh, well, somebody said, oh, we haven't had, they keep saying we haven't had a federal gas, federal gas tax increase for a bajillion years. I don't give a rip. I'm tired of paying taxes, right? I don't care how long it's been, right? We're getting gas tax state. We're double taxed on gases, on gas, gasoline. California's pay 95 and a half cents per gallon in taxes and fees. That's an average of $17 per fill up. Hello? $17 per fill up. People get a clue. California gas prices are already the second highest in the nation behind Hawaii. I don't, some of you love to go to Hawaii. Like if I want to just like pay through the nose, uh, I can find other ways to do that for everything, right? Gas prices the second highest next to Hawaii and are projected to reach over $4 a gallon in a few years due to new fees, new fees, more fees imposed by the state legislature. It's coming, folks. You ever heard of the CARB rules? I don't have time to go over it. California has $16 billion dollar budget surplus for this and all of us and Linda. That's after you buy all your groceries, you still have money in the bank, right? So pay your rent. That's a surplus. But the legislature and the governor chose to raise gas taxes because they think you're a freeloader. If pre-existing transportation taxes and fees were spent on transportation costs, in other words, the current transportation taxes and fees before this new increase, California would have $5.6 billion every year for transportation projects. We should be running on streets paved with gold. The gas tax, I've already said, is going to cost, it costs $700 a year. If you vote against this because of people like Mike Lee with Yuba County giving you bad advice to, to be a sucker for these criminals and perverts in Sacramento, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's ridiculous. These politicians and these bureaucrats are wedded at the hip. It's incestuous is what's going on here. You know, have you ever wondered how come you get arrested for the smallest things and I do, or like you ever miss a filing time or filing date for the IRS or franchise tax board or sending in money or paying your property taxes and like there's no grace oh no you got to pay a fee you got to pay 10 percent interest you got to pay a late fee no i like you beg you you got ran over that day your husband had ebola that day oh no we can't oh no oh my god well that's not fair that's not fair but anybody else like somebody was joking we should nominate hillary clinton to the supreme court so we can finally have her investigated, right? Well, thank God the other day, right after they had the blow up when Lindsey Graham went off at the uh, Kavanaugh hearings, one of the Democrat aides, they call it doxing. That's where you expose people's private information on the internet to throw them under the bus, right? And uh, so this kid I call him a kid. His name's Jackson Costco. Uh, went out and got into people's personal information, which he had access to, and blew it out on the internet. Oh, by the way, did you know that Kavanaugh's house has been trashed by by vandals? Sprayed all over his house. Just went to his house. I remember the the guy that was being appointed. Uh, by Trump or is going to be try to get him cleared to be the Department of Labor chairman. He was the head of like Carl's Jr. or something. They sent, uh, what's that white powdery substance? They, they sent one of those substances to his house and it threatened him so much. He, he just said, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to put, put my family through this. Right. So anyway, um, this Jackson Costco, who was most recently an intern, with Rep Representative Sheila Jackson, get out of my seat because I'm a black woman on United Airlines. Uh, Jackson Lee, 
He worked for her. He also worked as a legislative correspondent for Senator Maggie Hassan, Democrat New Hampshire. He was also a uh, press assistant for Barbara Boxer. Barbara Boxer was the one who said people ought to have a chance to take their kid home, test them out, and if they still don't want it, bring them back to be aborted. Uh, he built himself on LinkedIn as a Democrat political professional. He's the one who went out and he exposed a variety of people, including Lindsey Graham uh, and Mike Lee and Orrin Hatch, uh, and blasted their personal contact information online. It's called doxing. And uh, they've arrested him. And thank God for that. He has been charged with public rest- uh, making public restricted personal in- information, witness tampering, threats in interstate communication, unauthorized access of a government and computer, identity theft, second-degree burglary, and unlawful entry. Now, that's the law enforcement I used to remember, right? It's like, oh, you want to screw around? Okay, uh, we'll come to see you then, right? It's interesting. I, I've often uh, reflected on this that when it was Barack Obama, it was about his second year in, and I got a visit from the Secret Service in Marysville, I mean, Sheriff Durfer, when I talked about it to Sheriff Durfer, I said, hey, dude, I just had the Secret Service stop by. He said, why? He started laughing. I said, they just left the house, and I gave him your name. They said they wanted to talk to somebody that knew me for a reference. And uh, so somebody had sent a letter to the president that I get. I never got to read it, but they claimed that I wanted to kill the president. And uh, I said, well, I don't like the guy, but I, I'm, I wouldn't tell him I was going to kill him. Uh, anyway... We had a talk. We had two two different uh, interviews on weeks apart with the Secret Service. And Sheriff Durfer said, you know, Lou, I've been a, in law enforcement all these many years, decades, and I've never met one. And I said, well, I met two of them over here. They look like, like nice guys, but they were interested in me, the fact that I may want to shoot the president. Now so many people are saying they're going to shoot the president, poison the president, hope he gets run over, right, hope he falls off a tall building. I mean, it's a, it's like, it's coming. Is anybody getting held accountable? You wonder by law enforcement. And I, I asked these Secret Service guys, I said, hey, dudes, as we were finishing my second interview, right, as they wanted to search my house, how many guns I had, if I'd had any special training with weapons, da 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 And I asked them, as they, I said, hey, is this commonplace people threaten? He said, every single day, people threaten the president. Isn't that amazing? It's just an amazing thing. We live in a gnarly world. I can't even imagine what it's with Trump, man. We've got people hanging heads of him, bloody heads and stuff, that nutcase. It's just, like, amazing. So, uh, well, we're blown. We're like, I haven't even got to my list yet today. Look at that list. I, I, this, like, I need to do, like, a daily show or something, but I haven't got time to do it. All right, we'll be right back. You can uh, check us out. I'll give you the number for loose picks when we come back. Uh, after the uh, break here. We got one more hour if you want to stick around. Otherwise, go listen to something else. This is something you can do. You like say, oh, well, I just don't. You don't even have to leave your house. Go to gastaxrepeal.org, gastaxrepeal.org, and give them some money. Just get your charge card out. You know, instead of going down and buying a latte uh, two times this week or a, a smoothie or whatever, just give them 20 bucks, right, $25. Listen, the money that's going to be spent uh, to stop this yes on six There'll be about 20 to 1. $20 will be spent for every one that's spent for yes on sex will be spent to defeat it because the unions run this state. Going to be kicking rear out there. And even firefighters and teachers and cops that are for repealing the gas tax, their money has already been taken from them in union fees, and that's what's just going to happen. So you can give some money. You don't even need to leave your house. Just gastaxrepeal.org, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of ways that you can just swipe your card or give them your number or do something, and, and that you can help. Listen, people, give some money to politicians that you believe in. You think, oh, I, don't, I don't want to give any money to a politician. Well, you're going to get some 
uh, I can't even say the words on here that I that properly describes them. Uh, it's an a H word. It's a body part. Uh, that's who you're going to get to run your life. And you wonder how come they're always telling me what to do and come into my house. And they're like telling and, and investigating me. Well, this last song was a bumper music. All my asses go to taxes. It talks about people feeling like they're anointed. Let me, let me just tell you this. Senator Chuck Schumer apologized for after the word got out that he called a flight attendant a bitch. Nice guy, right? And you know who he was sitting next to? Who covered for him to keep it from getting out? Kirsten Gillibrand, or Gillibrand, whatever you want to do, from New York, another senator who just couldn't find anything good about Kavanaugh. Yet you can see pictures of her arm in arm with molester Weinstein and rapist Clinton, right? No problems with those guys. Didn't ever speak out against those guys. But, oh, yeah. Miss so anyway, Kirsten Gillibrand is sitting next to Chuck Schumer on a uh, flight, U.S. Airways flight from LaGuardia, LaGuardia Airport to Washington. <clears throat> and, um, and so they're on their phones, right? You, you ever been on, on these airlines and, and they say, you know, turn off all your devices, right? But people are like, oh, I just can't. I got to have 30 more seconds on this device or I'm going to wet my pants. So that would be your senator. And so he says, well, I, I, I just, he's chat. They're both chatting on their cell phones, right? Uh, when the captain, when they came over and said, please turn off all your devices, right? Uh, but they ignored the order and they just kept talking because they're important people, right? It's like, you have to like drive a funky little bicycle, but they're going to drive their SUV and suck up all them fossil fuels, right? Or they'll fly solo on a charter jet to France to be in, in, uh, in some kind of a global warming meeting. But you can't, uh, you got to ride a train somewhere and then you got to hitchhike over to get to your destinations. That's how it is, right? They think they're better than you and they don't have to live by the same stupid rules they're creating for you, right? So they ignored the order and they kept on talking. So don't you, this is just tick. I, I fly back and forth internationally and it just pisses me off when people harass flight attendants who are working their rears off. So it prompt a flight attendant had then to go back uh, and talk to them personally and explain that the federal aviation administration rules that they passed you get that these idiots passed them and they don't want to follow them themselves isn't it interesting that the very people that pass these stupid laws don't follow them themselves so schumer then asked the flight attendant now what are you thinking that we this is one of the most powerful senators in the country right and he's asking a flight attendant, couldn't he finish his call? What kind of complications in life does that cause this attendant? Is she going to get fired over it? The attendant said no, because the plane was waiting for him to finish so he could take off. In other words, this very important, my crap doesn't stink, senator, idiot, criminal, sits there on the phone and the plane is waiting to taxi because he won't shut the thing off because they won't give him a clear go ahead, right? Because people are still on their devices. So the state, uh, the uh, Senator ended his call, but then launched into an argument with the flight attendant claiming he was entitled to continue his chat until the cabin door was closed. So now he's an expert on FAA, right? So her response is like any good employee, she said she doesn't make the rules. She just has to follow them, right? Wouldn't you say something like that? Don't you feel like that's your life in Marysville, Sacramento, Chico, Oroville, Nevada City, wherever you're living? You think, ah, oh, I got to do this. I got, I got, I got, I must, I must, I must. Thousands of times a day, we got to do it this way because some idiot like Schumer 
came, or Gillibrand came up with an idea. So when she said she doesn't make the rules, he called her a bitch after she walked away. People heard it. And then he lied about it. You know, what kind of people are these, you know? They screw in somebody else's wife or calling people bitches and and talking trash and destroying people's lives when they're corrupt? Honestly, people, I, I find close friendships with people in the Yuba County Jail. I would not trade one of those friendships to be have a cup of coffee with these idiots back in Washington. These people have are totally out of control. If you think, you know what it gets me? I'm at some of, I don't even like to attend events anymore because if somebody walks in, oh my God, James Gallagher, the assemblyman's going to be here. I thought, get a life. Go get a, go help a homeless person. Help a person get off drugs. Help a married couple get along. Like, get a life. You're going to, you're going to like have a hot flash over assemblyman coming to your meeting please people will you like take inventory of your life and like read the bible find out what's important in life oh my god this supervisor so and so is going to come to the meeting can't we get supervisor so and so or robert bendorf could to come to the meeting why would why would we care he's just a human being it's it's like why would we care more about him? You know, it's a, it's a, you know what I love to read in the Bible. It's it's like the Kavanaugh hearings. It's just kind of raw and in your face. It says, "How come you let people come into your meetings and you prefer the Robert Bindorf over a homeless person?" He said, "Don't do that." James in the book of James said, "Don't do that. Honor honor people. Love people, right? No matter who they are." Don't, don't have different grades of like appreciation. Like, oh my God, that guy's rich. Hey, screw him. When he dies, he's going to leave it like the rest of us, right? It's like the guy who's Rockefeller's accountant, right? And some, some news guy, some shallow thinking news guy said, well, how much did he leave? And that guy said, he left it all, dude. He left it all. No U-Hauls. Joe Betancourt, when he drives you over to the funeral, when he cremates your body or drives you to the graveyard, he I have never seen Joe have a trailer hitch on the back of his hearse for your U-Haul to haul all your crap over there. Like all your toys, they went to somebody else. Forget about it. Honestly, people, these, these people that are, you watch on TV are corrupt criminals. De Blasio, Schumer, Cuomo. How about this Blumenthal? That guy, every time I see him now, the guy, I just want to strangle the guy. I need to take an anger management course. I, I teach one every week on Monday. I need to like, sometimes I just stand up and get on, sit in the seats with the guys and the girls because I, I need the same thing. I need to like, I'm always fighting to stay in control. Oh, there's so much to talk about. There's so much going on today. We're liable to see a vote, I guess on Kavanaugh, right? So the next time you see a flight attendant, tell them you love them and you just appreciate the job they're doing and just say, how fast do you want me to turn off this phone or my computer or my, or my, or my, or all my games or all the j crazy crap people haul on. You can't just like, leave it off. Like, just, can't you just have a flight? Like how important is a phone call anyway? Just like, come on, man. It's just like ridiculous. Well, I, I, uh, make sure if you send me uh, a text, 530-713-1838, that you give me your email, all right, o or your physical address. I need somewhere to send this uh, document to when I get it done here in the next day or so, okay? So do that. By the way, this Dr. Ford, that blonde gal, if you thought, think for a minute that she wasn't just a setup, you know, I, it's like, Hey, people that got raped, molested are a dime a dozen. Okay. So we feel bad about them. Hey, you know, at the bottom, if you want to go to work for Walmart, there's no, there's no line down there that says, Oh, if you're molested, you, you we move you to the front of the list or raped. And I'm talking about boys and girls. 
So it's like when you get out in the job world, outside of the PC sissy world, uh, just real life is uh, they just expect you to work on your issues, get counseling, get help. I feel bad for you, but do you think I'm going to cut you some slack on trashing a judicial court? I, I don't have sympathy for criminal people. I help criminal people. But if I'm going to say, I'm going to, oh, yeah, just run right over me because your mama molested you or your daddy molested you or your mom was a hooker or a crack addict, it's like, hey, join the real world. Join the human race. It gets gnarly out there. So it's like, hey, this gal, Ford, total jerk. Are you kidding me? She's a total loser. Some of you like, some. oh, well, you know, I'm sure that sometime in her life, you know, even though she can't remember anything about her life, the poor gal, uh, somebody like fingered her or something. I said, come on, come on, man. Are you kidding me? The gal's a total shill, total setup, paid off to come in and lie. And Feinstein can join her, you know. Oh, by the way, you know this, that Japanese gal on that, do you, you see a Japanese gal, Maisie Hirono from Hawaii, just like saying how she hates women or hates men. Men need to just shut up. She actually a came out and finally is now apologized for fundraising after Brett Kavanaugh allegations. Do you know all these Democrats went out and accused him of all kinds of uh, false sexual misconduct allegations and raised money? These people are little hookers. They're political hookers. They raised money off making a story up about Brett Kavanaugh, had no evidence to support it, and went out and sent letters out and emails, email blast, to get money. They used him as bait. These people. Oh, I got a picture here of Judge Kavanaugh's house, and it shows the it shows the uh, taggers tagging it. They actually, yeah. You, here, Chief, look at that right there. It shows taggers at his house spraying his house it, it's just unbelievable uh, we're, we're talking about middle class looking women these aren't like gangbangers Sedanos and Nortenos these are like middle class looking uh, scumbags uh, vandalized today by over 200 protesters the other this happened the other day uh, they destroyed the yard by driving cars on it threw feces on the windows Every outside wall was spray painted. Oh, you want to vote for the liberals? Spray paint somebody's house? I don't even spray paint people's houses I don't like. It's like this guy didn't do anything to them. He didn't make a ruling against them. And and they just go sp because he's he's actually a candidate. If you're a candidate, you're going to get your house vandalized <laughs> and your family threatened. You know what? I, I am impatient with these conservatives in Washington, but I will say that I respect their uh, courtesy and the way they handled the, the deal, right? Grassley, Hatch, all these people, I will say that they handled it in a in a gracious way unbelievable uh let's see if am i leaving something out here I've, I've been jumping all over the place oh let me go back to yuba county you know you guys i know i'm we're in yuba county so everything affects us here santos wiki man he lives over in sutter county but he you know i've been telling the city of marysville the city of marysville you know they the leadership over there hates me but I think they ought to make some money when they build a new bridge to charge people $5 a piece for driving in the city. I wouldn't just let anybody come here. It's like, hey, we need to be particular, right? Check them out. See if they get it. We should have like a little Marysville visa. You know, you could buy a year visa just like they do with the fishing now down at the fishing dock. They open the fishing uh, access up in Riverfront Park. By the way, Riverfront Park, uh, 
should be changed the name to Leonard Marks Park. That's my Dr. Leonard Marks. Lynn Marks. Something like a der, some kind of derivative like Lynn Marks uh, Soccer Complex. You know, I talked to city councilman and I said, it's, it's amazing to me. You know, I've just lived too long is the problem. I know too much. So I, I actually talk to city councilmen sometimes. And I said, do you know how you got that soccer field down there? They do not have a clue. They think like a stork hatched it. Do you know that? People just, they're running the city, and they don't know Jack Diddley about the city. I said, you know, it, that was created by a pediatrician who was a soccer coach who wanted to have a better place for families so they could all come to one central location to have all their kids of various ages play soccer instead of being scattered all over the community. And he took a crappy piece of real estate that, that the, the government uh, was letting go. That's why you have all the homeless people living along the river because the government will not take responsibility for it. So Lynn Marks uh, got all these volunteer organizations, churches, service clubs, the union, Operating Engineers Union. We all worked together to put that in down there. I asked city councilmen. They can't even tell me how that got there. And then they name it after some dude. That, they call it Beckworth Park at one time. The guy didn't have anything to do with this down there. I don't know why they don't honor people. You know, by God, if a politician had done that, that had named him. Like if, like if Jim Kitchen would have built that soccer field or if uh who else one of the harrises or somebody some politician would have built that they'd have had their name slapped all over that but because of the private individual that worked their rear off for years to put that in lynn marks oh yeah well who now who, who was that oh is he still around here they don't know jack they couldn't find their butt with both 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 hands and they uh so I've, I've talked to them. I talked to city councilman the other day, Marysville. I said, you notice that bridge being built over there? He said, oh, yeah, the bridge, the bridge, yeah. Hmm. And I said, why wouldn't you guys upgrade the entire soccer complex right now and get more soccer competitions going on throughout the year, bring more people to town? You know, they, they, they buy food, stay overnight, have competitions, right? And why don't you get that big construction company to help you? Because they're already using some of the fields for all their staging areas for the bridge. So they're going to fix them anyway. But they would probably be like, they would like a, to do everybody a solid. They could help both Yuba and Sutter counties because all of our kids play soccer and we could have the nicest soccer fields in Northern California. It just went right over the dude's head. I was suggesting to the city council members, I've re said this over and over, Finally, I've just had to take my whole block. We pulled 12 cars off my block, illegal, wrecked, broke down, all violating the law. I had to do that myself. Had to call the police. Chris Sachs was great, chief of police. Then we have, I've had to go neighbor by neighbor to clean up, and, and he's a real estate manager, to clean up the doggone streets, right? So you, you, I suggested the city council people in Marysville. They said, oh, you, you're just too negative. You're all too negative. I said, why don't you just, can't you come up with some money to just hire a tree service and give you a really good deal and cut down every dead tree in the community? By the way, do you know there's a whole line of trees that PG&E was required to put in years ago in front of their little power plant out at the corner of Marysville, Nadine at Glen Street, right? So they got these evergreens that are 30 feet high just like we had out at glad tidings remember we had to put in all those trees out there they're letting them die right you know why because some idiot with pg and e hasn't got the brains to turn the water on and keep it running right right so half these trees that are worth thousands of dollars each now because they're massive trees are just bright burnt red they're dead and these people that own houses across from that ugly power, uh, fenced-in power, just a whole gaggle of transformers and wires, they got to stare at these. They get up in the morning, make their coffee, look out the window, and it's a burnt up. Just looks like somebody took a blowtorch to these trees. And do you think, do you think anybody go over there and fix that? 
Calwater, PG&E. You think a city councilman would, could have some influence? They don't have, they can't pull off crap. I could pull, I honestly, if I took that project on, I could solve that in a couple of weeks. But that thing has been going on. I have talked to city councilmen, supervisors. It It is unbelievable how incompetent these people are. Oh, my God, Lou Benage is just such a negative guy. You know something? I just wish people would do their job. You know, when I go out to eat, people give me charge cards to go eat because they know I don't cook. I just, I get, you know, people saw me at the grocery store one day. They said, Lou, I've never seen you out buying groceries. How do you? you don't even look like you fit in a grocery store. You, you don't even like, you shouldn't even be in a grocery store. Right. And I said, well, I got to eat. I got to buy groceries. You know, I sl sleep in the middle of the night when nobody will see me like out at Walmart where they don't wear any pants and stuff shopping out there. And, uh, but I eat, eat it. But if I go to a restaurant, I, you know, we don't even expect the government to perform like going to a restaurant where they just come and say, hi, how you doing? What do you need? You want water? You want this? You want that? Oh, you, do you want your regular? Yeah, I want my regular chilies or wherever I go, Red Robin, whatever. And they just, they just, they do such a nice job, right? Well, we can't even get the government. They're making hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, well, we can't do, oh, we can't. Well, yeah, we can't even call you. I called a guy from the, the Marysville Joint Unified School District. They never even called me back. Called him in the morning. Never even called me back. I thought, what kind of people are they? The guy's probably making almost $200,000 a year. We'll be right back. You know, we're going to spend another 30 minutes and land the plane. We're working our way towards noon today, uh, and so then we'll have a uh, another program coming behind us, uh, sports talk. And uh, so I wanted to, uh, we'll just do the best we can in the last few minutes. Man, a lot of you were texting, uh, thanks uh, FedEx driver out of, that works the Loma Rica area, shouted out, uh, he wants to lose picks, and I appreciate your comments. There's a number of nice comments today, of people writing in and so I'll just give you the number once more for those that uh, maybe came in at the last minute. If if you want uh, my picks for the uh, Yuba Sutter counties, uh, and of course it includes some of the statewide picks as well. Uh, so you can uh, send it. Text me at seven one three one eight three eight. That's a five three zero seven one three one eight three eight. Or you could call the station here and. Santos is putting them on an email for me at seven four two fifty five fifty five. Well, so I, I had, was having a talk with some of the supervisors this week, Yuba County supervisors, and I'm talking about what I know. So I, I know you in Nevada County, Placer, Calusa, Butte. I don't know that much about your individual political situations over there, but we're all facing, listen, we're all facing the same thing. We're facing CalPERS. It's killing every single county, every agency, et cetera, et cetera. We need, we have people that are just buying into this liberal baloney in the state and it's affecting all of our no matter you know we got some prosperous counties plasters doing quite well maybe nevada as well but anyway um i was talking to a supervisor too this week about uh raises them getting raises uh, uh the you know all these government employees are union now so when they they do a contract with them there's automatic raises as long as they're breathing, they get raises, and uh, no matter. And 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 I don't mean to be disparaging of all government employees. Uh, I have good friends that are working for government. They're and they're exceptional employees. Otherwise, I wouldn't hang out with them. Uh, so uh, whether it's Caltrans, City of Yuba City, uh, City of Marysville, Yuba County, Sutter County. So particularly a lot in law enforcement and fire and etc. So uh, my contention is that uh, supervisors are way overpaid and underperformed. They crack themselves to be something that they cannot pull off. They don't have the ability, the mental wherewithal, 
uh, and they don't have the clout to do it. Uh, they can stop business. They can't create business. And it's like when Larry, the effer monger, uh, when the dollar store wanted to establish a new business out in his town of Sutter, he didn't want any competition from them of his business, his real estate. So uh, he did everything he could to throw nails under their wheels and called them efforts uh, under his breath when they, he thought the mic wasn't on. It's interesting when you have leaders like uh, Chuck Schumer, uh, the bitch, or uh, the effer out in uh, Sutter County, Larry Munger. It's interesting when you have people running your county or your city uh, that have these kind of uh, sentiments and ulterior motives. But in August of 2013, uh, Roger Abbey, who was the supervisor in the fifth, uh, not the fifth district, I don't know what district that is. Anyway, it's this the south district, Wheatland area, Plumas Lake area of Yuba County. I can't remember the number, and it's irrelevant. You don't need to bother. Please don't bother me with telling me what the number is. It's not the point. So Roger Avi lost a race out there to Gary, uh, the gift that keeps on giving Bradford. It was, it's probably going to turn out historically to be the biggest uh, electoral muff uh, Yuba County has ever pulled off. But Roger Avi lost that race. But prior to doing that, he actually suggested to the supervisors in August of 2013 that they, they reduce their their salaries. And the reason is, is that they couldn't afford, uh, they're going broke, right? Every, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's the city of Yuba city prospering as it is with buildings going up everywhere. They're going broke as well. All you have to do is look up Robert, but, uh, Robin Batania's comments about, uh, how much they owe in debt to CalPERS. All these cities have done the same thing. <coughs> so he suggested, that they reduce their uh, pay at five to ten percent, which uh, he noted such reductions, along with a cut in mileage and allowance, could save the county twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. Not bad, right? And uh, I would cut their. I would have suggested cutting their pay in half. Um, so his his comment was: It's a function of the board to lead the county. We are asking employees to make a number of sacrifices, and his point was: Shouldn't we? So at that time, he said supervisors are paid $4,015 a month. This is in 2013, or $48,180 a year, but have not received an increase since 2007. So, but let me add something to this. Roger wasn't telling the whole story, and the supervisors are dishonest when they don't tell the whole story. I'm not saying he was intentionally trying to deceive voters. He was simply trying to ask them to reduce this amount of money, 48180 down 5 or 10%, and give that money back to just the management of the county. And so, uh, anyway, uh, John Nicoletti, who now works for Garamendi, Mary Jane Griego, who now works for Garamendi, and Hal Stalker, who is now uh, out of office but still lives in the county, they all voiced, op voted op uh, voiced opposition to the proposal, and Abby didn't push it any farther because he's a pretty mild-mannered. He could have called for a vote. He didn't. Griego noted that when she was elected in 2000, the salary was 1200 Now, that's more like it in my view. It's public service, for God's sake. And she said it was a part-time job. Now it requires full-time commitment. Now, it's interesting to me that the supervisors, back when it was $1,200 a month, met every week. Now they meet twice a month. And yet the pay uh, is not $1,200 a month. It's a minimum of four to $5,000 a month. Plus, when you add on the health and retirement, retirement, and other benefits like per diem, I call it tuna sandwich money. The the job is paying over eighty thousand dollars a year. Now supervisor said, Hey, well we don't get that much money put in the bank. Now let me just make this clear. I'm just this is an offer to the entire community that can hear my voice. If you want to pay my taxes, you don't have to pay me, but if you'd like to pick up 
and give me a car so I can get rid of my car. I won't have to pay on my car, and you pay my insurance. I will pay all the taxes on your gifts that you want, right? In other words, anybody that ever benefits me, I consider it a blessing and income, right? It's I didn't have to go out and earn that, right? So when I, when I was working for a business and they paid for my health insurance, I thought, whoa, 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 that's a lot of money right there because I don't have to go earn money, pay taxes, and then pay the rest of the money for health insurance, right? That's a huge, huge benefit. The supervisors don't want to look at that that way. So when I say to them, hey, wait a minute, they say, we're not making all that 80000 They're making way over $80,000. And, and they will not sit down and write that down on paper for you, but I've seen it. When you add up all their benefits. But people, it's, it's funny. You know, at one time, you got money for working, and then you turn around and use that money to buy things like groceries. Like we could also say, if you go to work for ABC company, we're going to pay for all your groceries. Then people would say, I'm not making all that money. Yeah, they do give me food, right? $300 a month in groceries, right? Because I work at Bel Air. They give me three. They give me all my groceries free. That's not a benefit. That's not salary. So once upon a time, you bought your own health insurance after you paid your taxes, right? It wasn't a deduct. Now it's tax free. You get health insurance. So the supervisor, they don't want to every, oh, they quote this, how much they put in the bank. Screw that. They're getting a free per diem. They get per diem gas money, tuna sandwich money. They get uh, all kinds of free junkets flying. They don't even count all the junkets. They fly them all over, fly them back to Washington, D.C. All this all go. We're going to go back and influence Senator the bitch Schumer. Chucky, she's the bitch Schumer. I need to be on my phone because I'm the most important person on this plane. It's a shame that some of those weren't on those 9-11 planes, some of those politicians. It's just a shame. It's a shame. I think the only Olson's wife went down on that, that you know, the, uh, the guy that used to appear before the Supreme Court, his wife was on there. But other than that, all these politicians somehow escaped that thing. Good one for the conspiracy theorists to think about. So John Nicoletti and Mary Jane Griego, who both are legends in their own minds, they said, and Stalker says, talking about these salary reductions has more to do with politics and physical responsibility. You know something? It's a shame that uh, Roger Abbey lost his election because of a horrible campaign manager because that guy he was an honest guy he had his wits about him he actually was intelligent versus the Bradford they got now and these guys not only did Roger Abbey suggest this but Andy Vasquez I reminded Andy this week I said Andy you, he was telling me oh we we can't we can't reduce our salaries or increase I said Andy you actually voted to reduce your salary you could do that they just turned you down, dude, and mocked you for it. Uh, but then Nicoletti says the thing that just totally just sends me. To I have to go take meds after I read these things. He says board members run for this seat to serve the community, not for the salary. I thought, give me, I need, I need a uh, breathing apparatus because this stuff is piling up all over my head over here. He said it, it needs to be kept at a competitive level to encourage people to run for the seat. I'm telling you, I could get tweakers to run for that seat if you cut the thing in half. It is so shameful. These people are making over 80000 Oh, but we don't. Well, yeah, we meet twice. So, you know, they, they don't even have the, the Spaldings to meet when people can show up and contest their issue, you know, and bring up a, a problem. They meet when people are actually at work, so they they don't have they don't have to put up with any crap. Then they say, "Well, nobody's care nobody cares about the county but us." Yeah, we're paying you eighty thousand dollars to care a crap about the county. I'd care about it too if you paid me eighty thousand dollars. What I'm what I'm interested in is people that care about the county and do it for free. And then if you paid them, they'd feel really grateful for it. 
But all these people say, oh, yeah, well, this is such a tough job. We got to go to meeting after meeting after meeting. I agree with you there. I hate meetings. In fact, I'm thrilled I don't work for the church anymore because they, they just meeting me to death out there. Right? I get to do all the fun stuff now, deal with drug addicts and stuff. Right? And deal with communists and nutcases over in Vietnam and Cambodia and people wanting to do stupid stuff to you. Deal with Nortenos and Sedenos and the Hmong Nation gang members, right? That's the fun stuff for me, the entertaining stuff. Sitting in meetings all day where you, where you actually sit and look at people for hours and then you walk away and you think you actually accomplished something, that's a scary. That drives people to go to have to go over for Napa State Hospital or mental health for a tune-up. Jeez. So, hold on here. I got guys yakking in the other room here. They forgot we actually are a radio station until they get on. Uh, okay, so I want to just remind you how wonderful Donald Trump is today. I don't care whether you like him or not. Oh, man, how much time do we have? I need to read this. This guy, my friends, I got friends that are researching stuff for me and they send me stuff and, and let me see if i can pull it up here real quick it was just so good and uh if i can find it really quick i think i have time to read this all right maybe i'm not gonna huh I don't see it. Okay. I want to read this. This is from the wife of a Navy SEAL who was killed in action. Okay? Uh, she, her name is Karen Vaughn. She's the mother of Aaron Vaughn, Navy SEAL. She's talking about Donald Trump and all people, how people nitpick him, right? And she says, she's talking about kind of an analogy to Trump being to a salty sailor or a fireman that, that's going to save the day. She says, sometimes God uses the nonsense salty sailor to get the job done. Appreciating what the man is doing doesn't mean we worship the salty sailor or even desire to be like him. It doesn't even mean God admires the salty sailor. Maybe he just knows he's necessary for such a time as this. If you read the Bible, you should get get a clue how God used some amazing people that weren't even God followers when he hooked, when he got to, got them to behave themselves. Some of you Pharisees out, out there that are all nitpicking about every little thing. Uh, maybe you'll get a clue here. You just pick, you know, you just, uh, you read the Bible like it's a buffet. I believe with all my heart, she says that God placed a salty sailor in the white house to give this nation one more chance in November 2016. Donald Trump is what he is, and he is still the man he was before the election and without guilt. I very much admire what that salty sailor is accomplishing. He's not like me. That's okay with me. I don't want to be, I don't want to be like him. I will never behave like him. I will, I know we've never had a man like him lead in our nation before. It's crazy and a little mind-blowing at times. But I can't help admire the stamina and ability he has acting with his heart rather than a calculated PC, think tank screened, carefully edited script. I'm so sick of pussies in the White House myself. I still believe that is why he became our president and why he's been able to handle a landslide of adversity and still pass unprecedented amounts of good legislation for our country and do great works for many other nations, including Israel. I'm thrilled with what he's doing for my nation, for the cause of Christ, whether intentional or unintentional, doesn't matter to me. And for the concept of rebuilding America and putting her first, I will not be ashamed of my position because others don't see him through the same lens. Should it matter to me if a fireman drops an F-bomb while he's pulling me from a burning building? Would I really care about 
what came out of his mouth in those moments? Heck no. I don't care about what he is what he was doing. Sorry, heck no. I'd care about what he was doing. He wasn't sent there to save my soul, and I'm not looking to him for spiritual advice. All I'm thinking in those moments is thank you, God, for sending the fireman. And Donald Trump is our fireman. I'll soon post. Anyway, I won't go on. I wanted to, uh, I, I listed a bunch of very short articles that were very inspiring to me. Manufacturing confidence at an all-time high despite workforce shortage. So all you folks out there in Oliver's and Linda who are been running from a job, there's still jobs out there. You could go get one. Nearly 93% of manufacturing Net manufacturers are projecting further expansions for their business. I want you to remember when Barack Obama at a town hall meeting said the days of U.S. manufacturing are in the past. We're going to have to retrain everybody as techies or something. It says here it's one of the best outlooks the National Association of Manufacturers has seen in 20 years since it's been conducting surveys among its 14,000 members. We used to be happy when the number would get to the mid and high 50s, not 91% people of people being uh, positive. I don't have time to fuss with that much longer, but that is phenomenal. Let me just read Hispanic Latino employment statistics for September 2018. It's down Hispanic. All the people that want to work out there, they're Hispanic. It's down to 4.5%. Uh, number employed over 27 million Hispanics number unemployed down to a uh, little over a million uh, labor force participation 66 percent in uh, in September I mean it's just amazing the uh, people should be just thrilled if you care at all about people being able to find a job and supply their kids with school clothes and uh, ability to send their kids to soccer camp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It, it doesn't matter uh, where you look. It's, it's very positive. And regarding the illegal alien situation, which I, I meet more of them every week than you met in your lifetime because I'm in the ICE, ICE facility in Yuba County, uh, DACA, that's one of these kids, these little children, one of these little children, you know, these, these innocent children, was just caught with 20 just caught with 20 pounds of methamphetamine uh, on the border and he uh, has DACA privileges in the United States let's see uh, they had 14 where did they find this uh, he was a part of the deferred action for childhood arrivals this arrival was 22 year old Mexican uh, and he was driving a little Kia loaded with methamphetamine on Highway 86 in the uh, United States of America near El Centro. Uh, so I just want to remind you that this uh, we've been getting BS shoveled to us regularly. All right. This week. If you find somebody that's doing something pretty kind towards you, it may be an angel unaware, so pay them back. Be kind to them. And uh, we're coming back. Oh, you, you got the week. How are we doing? Next Saturday, we good to go together? Okay, we're going to do a live show. And uh, my number is 713-1838. If you want to shoot me an email, and I'll send you loose pics. Catch you next week.